And now... The Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the Hall of Fantasy. Welcome to the series of radio dramas dedicated to the supernatural, the unusual, and the unknown. Come with me, my friends. We shall descend to the world of the unknown and forbidden, down to the depths where the veil of time is lifted, and the supernatural reigns as king. Come with me and listen to the tale of The Marquis of Death. Are you coming, David? Yes, Andre. Where are you? Right along the riverbank. Oh, yes, I, I see you. Where is he? Over oh, here. Everett. Don't worry. He is alive. What happened to him? I will show you. Let me light a match. Take a look at his throat, monsieur. Three little red marks. That is correct, mon ami. The mark of the vampire bat. <laughs> And now for our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Marquise of Death. My brother went with me to Milo in the southern part of France. For while I wrote my novel, he was to rest. The doctors in the States had told him to take a complete six-month rest. And I knew of no better place in which to do it. It was a warm evening in June when it began, this tale I tell. A warm evening, cooled by the soft breath of a summer's breeze. Everett, my brother, had gone for a walk. Monsieur André de Cour, the son of the mayor of Milo, had dropped in for a glass of wine. Another glass, André? Uh, one more, and that is all. And how are you coming with your novel, mon ami? Mm, I haven't even started, André. I've only been here two weeks, you know. What's the matter? Why do you wait so long to begin? Oh, you whine, Andre. Ah, I take pleasure. Oh, no, I can't explain it, Andre. It just can't get started. I thought I had a good plot when I came over here, but the more I think about it, the less I like it. Then you do not know what you will write about? No. I hope you'll not think it presumptuous of me, monsieur. But I know the story you could write. Oh? I shall tell it to you. Have you ever heard of those they call the undead, les morts qui vivent? The undead? Doesn't that refer to someone who lives even after death? Oui, but in a very certain way, mon ami. One who lives after death by feeding upon the blood of the living. A woman who was known as the Marquise de la Maupartre. The name rings a bell somewhere in my memory, but I can't quite place it. It should, mon vieux. Many stories have been written of the frequent appearance that she's made since her death. Since her death? Oui. I myself saw her one night, many years ago, when I was just a lad. I shall never forget the sight of her. Why, was she so terrible to behold? Oh, quite the contrary. She was the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. Shall I tell you about her? Oh, yes. Mettez-vous à votre aise, for it is a fairly long tale. 150 years ago, this part of France was the personal property of the Marquis de la Maupartre. The Marquis was a kind man who cared for his people as much as they cared for him. He was a lonely man, the Marquis. But he interested himself with his people and this way forgot his loneliness. When he was almost 45, he married her. No one knew how she came to this province, nor when she arrived. Immediately, the Marquis began paying attention to her. And in a short while, they were married. It was after the marriage that the Marquis began to change. She seemed to bring out in him everything that was bad. One night, there came to this province an unknown carriage drawn by four full black horses. Get off! Get off there! The driver whipped the horses and called out harshly to them. Those who saw the carriage said the driver had the eyes of a madman. Get off there! The carriage raced along the road. Stopping finally when it came to the Chateau Maupart. No one got out of the carriage, but the driver jumped down and made his way into the chateau. The driver claimed to be the father of the Marquise, 
and that she must return home with him for a while. And indeed, the Marquise of felt is sorry. I must go with him, my husband. But it will not be for long. And so she went with the black-caped man with the terrifying black eyes. One month to the day she left, she returned. The same man brought the carriage. Get up! Get up now! And the Marquis de la Mopin was inside. They arrived in the dead of night. We are here, my daughter. As I see. You have what I have promised you. As long as time exists, so shall you exist. Others may die, but you will live forever. Remember that at night, when the sky is dark and the moon is high in the heavens, then you shall walk the earth while others sleep. Then you may strike them down. The Marquise went into the chateau, and the carriage and man disappeared and were never seen again. It was after her return that the Marquise developed an aversion to sunlight. By day she would sleep, and when the sun had set, she would wake and live while others slept. The Marquis soon died, and he was laid to rest. And one by one, the servants died. And those that were left ran away, saying that she had caused their deaths. And they said that the mark on her neck she had once she returned to the Chateau Mopart had been caused by a vampire. And that she too had become one of the dead who live. Les morts qui vivent. Is that all of the story? No, mais non, mon ami. It captures your interest, I see. Yes, go on. The Marquise disappeared shortly after that. But occasionally the villagers would see her, and some lived to tell about it. What do you mean? Many they found dead. Those who were brave enough to go abroad at night. Dead with the triple puncture of the vampire bat on their throats. You don't actually believe that, do you? Oui, I do. But Andre, you don't expect I me tell to... you, I saw her, mon ami. When I was younger, I didn't believe the tale. Another lad and I had gone over to the chateau to play around the ruins. It became quite late, and the sun set in the west. Suddenly she was there, in back of me, standing there in a black gown, with her raven tresses falling down over her shoulders, her skin the color of pale ivory, and her eyes looking through me, holding me in a trance by their power. Oh, no. I shall never forget her, mon ami. She must be beautiful, the way you describe her. Words cannot do justice to her. By the way, where's your brother? Oh, he said he was going for a walk along the river. Which way? North or south? Well, I don't know. Why? Because the ruins of the Chateau Mopart stand north of Milo on the river. No one ever walks there alone at night. You really expect me to believe that story? I would if I were you, monsieur. The Marquise walks along the bank of the town river at night. If your brother is walking north toward the Chateau, he is apt to meet her. And that meeting, monsieur could very well result in his death. Back now to our story. An original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne entitled The Marquis of Death. We sat there in the gathering darkness. Andre Lacour had just told me a story I found difficult to believe. Yet he sat there, sipping his wine. And a look in his face told me that he believed it. Believe me, mon ami, if your brother is walking north, along the banks of the town, he is apt to meet the Marquise. And that meeting could very well result in his death. You really do believe the story, don't you? But of course I do. And I would advise you to believe it too, mon ami. What do you think I should do? Go searching for him. Alone? I shall go with you, monsieur. All right. Venez avec moi. Come with me. Together we shall go to the bank of the town. Perhaps we may not find him. But if we do, he will be a victim of les morts qui vivent. Of the dead who live. Oh, 
What if he walked the other way? Then we shall have made the trip for nothing, but at least we'll know. Shall I try calling him? Oui. Everett! Everett! He's around here. You should have heard that. He might not be able to hear you, monsieur. Maybe we ought to split up. A good idea, but do not go far. Stay within voice of each other. All right. You go south. I'll go north. We meet again here in ten minutes. Ten minutes. Au revoir. See you later. I watched him walk off. It was getting quite dark when I started down the river. It couldn't have been more than three minutes from the time we parted. When she stepped out from behind the tree. Francois, monsieur. Uh, good evening. Are you looking for someone? How did you know? I heard you calling to him. Have you seen anybody around here? No one, monsieur. What are you doing down here? I am walking, monsieur. You live around here? Near the chateau, monsieur. The chateau? Oui. But what are you staring, monsieur? Your eyes. Davy! Davy! What? Your friend. He is calling to you, monsieur. A bientôt. Davy, thy body! Where are you? Part of the river north. A bientôt. Are you coming, Davy? Yes, Andre. Where are you? Right along the riverbank. Yes. Yes, I see you. Where is he? Over here. Everett. Don't worry, he's alive. What happened to him? I will show you. Let me light a match. Take a look at his throat, monsieur. Three little red marks. And that is correct, mon ami. The mark of the vampire bat. <laughs> We shall know how your brother is in a few minutes, mon ami. Stop wearing holes in your carpet. I saw someone out there, Andre. Out where? By the river. Oh? Who was it? A woman. A woman? Yes. What did she look like? I don't know. It was pretty dark. She stayed by she bringing Ed back here. Did she talk to you? Yes. What did she say? Well, she said she was out walking, that she lived near the chateau. You know, her eyes, they were the only things I could really see clearly. They seemed to burn and shine in the darkness. I felt like I was being hypnotized, and then you called me. That snapped me out of it. Then you have met the Marquise of Death, mon ami. And had I not called you when I did, you would not be alive to tell about it. Did she say anything else? Yes. She said, Abianto, two or three times. You know what that means, do you not? Something like, I'll see you again soon, isn't that it? Oui. And she means that, monsieur. She will see you again. Well, the doctor's coming. Yes. Perhaps he can tell us how badly your brother has been hurt. How is he, doctor? He has had a narrow escape. You are his brother? Yes. He will need blood transfusions. He has lost a great deal of blood. Then do you think we should take him to the hospital? We cannot do that, Monsieur Gaumont. Oh, why not? This is a very delicate matter. The people of Milo will not allow it. What do you mean, Dr. Moreau? It, uh, you tell him, Andre. Uh, oui, doctor. What he means, David, is that she will follow your brother wherever he goes. The doctor cannot take the risk of bringing him to the hospital. The danger to the other patients would be too great. You can't, just... I shall bring it back here, Monsieur Gaumont. All right. He was walking down by the river, was he not? Oui, Monsieur Gaumont and I went after him. We found him just in time. Those three marks on his throat, you know what they are, Monsieur? The marks of the vampire bat, the mark of the Marquise of Death. Well, he hasn't anything been done to stop her. Because we cannot find him, Monsieur. And besides, the. Tons people are afraid to go after her. If they went out in sufficient numbers, They've I'd... tried that before, mon ami. When the sun shines, they've gone out and searched for a resting place. For she lies helpless during the rain of the sun. They've searched all day, and yet they've not found it. Mm. And those unlucky ones who stayed after dark, some of them went to join those she had claimed earlier. That's why they do not go out after her, mon ami. They are afraid, and with good reason. What do they do? There are protective measures, Monsieur Gaumont. Garlic, the cross, things which the dead who live fear. Uh, but it is getting late. I shall return as quickly as I can. <laughs> what was that? It sounded like a window breaking. Came from upstairs. Come on. Good thing you regained consciousness. I doubt it. Then what broke the window? Uh, we'll see right now. Look, look out! What was it? Did, 
dead who live. The vampire bat. What's he doing here? Let me see. He's all right, isn't he? No, Monsieur Gaumont. He is not all right. He will not need the transfusion now. Your brother is dead. <laughs> Back now to our story, an original tale of fantasy by Richard Thorne, entitled The Marquise of Death. The three of us, Andre Lacour, Dr. Moreau, and myself, stood there, staring out the broken window after the thing that had flown out. My brother lay in the bed, eyes open, seeing nothing. He will not need the transfusion now. Your brother... Is dead. What? That is correct. Remember what Andre said about her returning? Well, she did. She came back before we could do anything for him. Now, it is too late. To stand here and calmly say that he's dead, you accept it for a fact, but you don't propose to do anything about it. What can we do, mon ami? We can go find her, we can destroy her. Oh, others have tried before you, Monsieur Gaumont, with no success. I don't care. I'm going out there, even if I have to go alone. You cannot go out there alone. But I am. And you're not going to stop me. I shall go with you, mon ami. And I, monsieur, I shall go with you, too. What about him? He will be all right, monsieur Gaumont. There is nothing more she can do to him. Before we started out, the doctor insisted on picking up some things. Eventually, we were ready, and we started out into the blackness of the night. You have everything? Yes, yes. All right, let us go. Where, where shall we begin, Doctor? In the ruins of the chateau, Andre. Why don't you bring all those things, Doctor Moreau? The wooden stake, the crosses. If we find the mortier vive, the dead who live, we shall have need for the things we have brought. We must stay close together, yes. close enough so that we can always talk to each other. Yes. No matter what happens, we must not become separated. The a what? A flashlight, mon ami. What are we to look for? A trail. A good path worn smooth by the years of returning to her resting place. I have been thinking since we started out tonight. And that, I am sure, is the only way we can find her. At either end of the path. There we shall find the resting place of the Marquise of Death. Let's begin. Oui. Uh, I will take the center, André. Uh, you take the left. All right. Monsieur Gaumont, you take the right. right. We will circle the chateau at varying lengths from it. Look not only for the path, but for the presence of each of us, so that she cannot destroy us singly. All right, let us go. Right. Bonne chance, monsieur. Bonne chance. Good luck. That is far enough, monsieur Gaumont. Right. Look for the footpath. Oui. Bonsoir, monsieur. We meet again. What? Silence. Where did you come from? I have been following you, monsieur. You're so beautiful. My eyes. Look at my eyes. Your eyes. And I come close to you. Like this, monsieur. So close. Davy! Doctor, look! Hold up your cross, David! Your cross! A bientôt, monsieur. David, are you all right? Are you all right, Monsieur Gaumont? Uh, what happened? Let, let me see your neck, Monsieur. Is he all right? Oui. She did not touch him. All of a sudden, she was here beside me. She told me to look into her eyes. I couldn't help myself. And then I seemed to be going to sleep. It is a good thing André looked back and saw you, Monsieur Gaumont. We reach you just in time. We will have to stay together, the three of us. We cannot split up. Oui. She's standing right there, right where... Look. Where? Right there. It's a path. You have found it. What should we do? Follow the path, Mr. Raymond. Let us go. This path, it leads away from the chateau. Always before we search near the chateau. The woods get heavy up ahead, Doctor. And she cannot harm us as long as we stay together. Put the cross around your neck, Monsieur Gaumont. As Andre and I have done. Right. Had you worn it there before, she would not have come near you. Now, the woods begin here. Uh, let us go slowly, then. The path is well hidden. Oui. No 
No wonder we have missed it so many times before. Look, up ahead. A cave. The path leads into a cave. Then that must be a resting place. Let us go quickly. Uh, be careful. You'll be around here somewhere. It's getting close to morning. The sky is lightning. Oh, the better for us, Mr. Gamor. She will be powerless when the sun rises. This is the cave. Let us go inside. Shine your lump to pass your head of us. I see something up ahead. Looks like a coffin. It's a coffin, monsieur. Aye, but you will be returning soon. The sun will rise in a short while. She must return here to sleep through the day. Back to the other side, into the shadows. Panic out. She comes. There's a bed up there. Then suddenly it changed into a beautiful woman. Silence! She has stopped. Now she is getting into the coffin. The sun is rising. Now we get her! Where did you go? Now you will die, what is it, number five? This one is rising, what is it? There's nothing to go. Now, where is it? The only way the dead who live can be killed, mon ami. So perishes the Marquis de la Maupart. The terrible toll of death she has taken through the years is now ended. She has crossed the barrier from which there is no return. Below has been freed from the curse of the Marquis of Death. Tonight's tale of the unusual, the terrifying, the unknown. Join us again when next we journey down the corridors of the Hall of Fantasy to hear another strange tale of the supernatural. All characters and events portrayed in these programs are fictional, and any similarity to actual events or persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. <laughs>